This video is the first in a series of videos that covers typical questions from the College Algebra Final Exam. Make sure to subscribe so that you do not miss future videos from this series. Now let's get to it. This question wants us to find the vertex of the graph of the function f of x equals 2x squared minus 4x plus 1. To do this, we will want to know the vertex formula. The x-coordinate of the vertex can be found by the formula negative b over 2a. In this case, a is 2 and b is negative 4. Negative b is negative of negative 4 because b is negative 4 and 2 times a is 2 times 2 because a is 2. Simplifying, the opposite of negative 4 is 4, and 2 times 2 is 4. So this will simplify. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So the x-coordinate of our vertex is 1. Now we just need to find the y-coordinate. To do this, we plug in 1 for x in the original problem. So our original problem, f of x is the same as y, equals 2 times x squared, and x again is 1, minus 4 times x, and again x is 1, plus 1. Simplifying, we get 2 times 1, which is 2, minus 4 times 1, plus 1, which equals negative 1. That means that the vertex has coordinates 1, negative 1. This next question wants us to graph the piecewise function. f of x has two pieces. One is f of x equals 3 for the values x is less than or equal to negative 1. And the other one is f of x equals x squared for the values x greater than negative 1. Since f of x essentially means y, we need to graph two pieces y equals 3 and y equals x squared, but we will only graph these functions over the regions they have listed here. The top equation stands for the function y equals 3, which is the horizontal line through 3 on the y-axis, but we only want to graph the portion of that line for which x is less than or equal to negative 1. So we want to start here. The solid circle means that x can equal negative 1. And then we want to graph this to the left. This graph shows all the values of y equals 3 for when x is less than or equal to negative 1. The second equation is y equals x squared. If we solve for a couple points on this parabola, say x equals negative 1, 0, and 1, we will get a good feel for this function. Since y equals x squared, when x is negative 1, we will have negative 1 squared, which equals positive 1, and 0 squared, which equals 0, and 1 squared, which equals 1. We could also solve for the point where x equals 2, and we would get 2 squared, which equals 4. Now all of the right side of this parabola will be on our graph, and a little bit of the left side as well. So the point 0, 0 will be on the graph of our piecewise function because the x-coordinate 0 is greater than negative 1. So is the x-coordinate 1, so the point 1, 1 will be on our graph of this piecewise function, and the point 2, comma 4, so this whole right side of the parabola will be on our piecewise function, as well as part of the left side of this parabola. So we want to find the boundary point on the left, which is the point negative 1, 1. Since we are only graphing the equation y equals x squared for all x values greater than negative 1, we want to know where that negative 1 value lies. 
However, since our equation says that all the x's are greater than negative 1 and not equal to negative 1, that point negative 1, 1 will have an open circle on our graph. So we can draw our parabola up to that point. So the graph I have here is the complete graph of the piecewise function f of x equals 3 for the values x less than or equal to negative 1, and f of x equals x squared for the values x greater than negative 1. This next question wants us to completely factor the polynomial 12x cubed plus 20x squared minus 3x minus 5. Because this polynomial contains four terms, we will want to factor it by the grouping method. The grouping method involves factoring out the GCF of the first two terms and the GCF of the last two terms. 4x squared is the greatest common factor of the first two terms, and 4x squared times 3x would give us 12x cubed, and 4x squared times 5 would give us 20x squared. So that's how we factor the first two terms. Whenever you have a negative on this third term, you will factor out a negative. And since there's no GCF between 3x and negative 5, we will just factor out a negative 1. 3x times negative 1 would give us the negative 3x and positive 5 multiplied by negative 1 equals negative 5. So that's how we factor the last two terms. We can see now that we have the same binomial, and that means this is factorable by grouping. By grouping, we pull out the 3x plus 5 from both of these terms, and the last two factors that are in front of these go into their own set of parentheses. At this point, we should recognize that this last binomial is the difference of two perfect squares. Using the formula a squared minus b squared factors into a plus b a minus b, we can factor 4x squared minus 1 into 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. And that will be our final answer, 3x plus 5 times 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. That's the complete factorization. This next problem involves compound interest. If $5,000 is invested in an account paying 4% interest compounded continuously, what will the amount in the account be after 15 years? For this problem, you will need the compounded continuously formula. A, which is the amount in the account, will equal P, which is the principal balance of 5,000, multiplied by the number E to the exponent R times T. If your calculator does not have a method for you to type both of the exponents R and T at the exponent level, then you will definitely want to put parentheses around the r times t in order to get the correct answer. So let's substitute the values. a is what we are solving for, p is the $5,000 principle, e is the e to the x button on a calculator, r is the interest rate as a decimal, and 4% is 0.04, T is the time in years, which in this case is 15. Now we just need to type that into a calculator. $5,000 times the e to the x button to the power 0.04 times 15. Our answer rounded to the nearest cent is $9,110.59. So the $5,000 investment turned into $9,110.59. This next question involves simplifying the radical expression square root 24 plus 2 times square root 50 minus square root of 150. In order to add and subtract radicals, 
we need the same number under the radicand, which in this case is a square root. We need the same number under the square root to combine them. We will first work on simplifying each square root. We want to use our perfect square list and find the largest perfect square that is a multiple of each of these radicands. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and 5 squared is 25. That's as large as we need to go for this problem. The largest perfect square factor of 24 is 4. We can rewrite square root of 24 as square root of 4 times square root of 6. The largest perfect square factor of 50 is 25. 25 times 2 is 50, and 25 also goes into 150 six times. Now we should perform the perfect squares. Square root of 4 is 2, and square root of 25 is 5, and square root of 25 on the next term is also 5. We should simplify and write all the numbers in front of the radicals. So 2 square root 6 is simplified, 2 times 5 is 10, and that goes in front of the square root 2, and the 5 factor goes in front of square root 6. Next we look for our like terms. Two of these terms have a square root 6, and we can combine them by adding and subtracting the numbers in front of those, which is 2 minus 5. That gives us negative 3 plus 10 square root 2. This could also be written as 10 square root of 2 minus 3 square root of 6. And that's as far as we can go with this problem. To be notified when the next video of the series is completed, please subscribe to my channel. I encourage you to try all these problems again and see if you can verify them on your own. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe for more math tips.